If it's your goal to have a healthy and energy efficient home, it's time to get rid of your old chimney and make room for something better. In this video, we're gonna talk about whether removing your chimney is the right move for your house and some things you need to consider to keep your house from falling apart and your wallet from running dry. I'm Matt from Rise, and we've helped millions of homeowners make their homes more comfortable, healthy, and planet friendly through articles, videos, and the products we sell in our store. And if you find this video helpful, consider subscribing to our channel. Completely removing an old chimney is kind of like getting your appendix out. The thing has to come out because it's useless and dangerous, but you can't exactly go slashing around with a kitchen knife. Now, this project can be a costly and lengthy undertaking because often the chimney structure is load bearing. So if done wrong, it can cause serious structural damage to your home. Because you know, you're digging a hole right in the middle of your house. I've taken basically the whole brick chimney out of my 1850s Victorian home from the very top of the chimney cap to the bottom brick on the basement floor. And man, I've learned a lot, especially the ways to minimize risk to your health, your wealth, and the planet. Here's what we're going to talk about today. Now feel free to jump to the section that answers your most pressing questions. Now, all right, let's do this. So, is it a good idea to remove a chimney? Well, this can be a loaded question, but I'm gonna make it easy for you. Yes, it's a great idea to remove an old chimney, whether that's just the chimney stack or the entire chimney through your home. An unused chimney causes really obvious problems that I'll get into in a moment, but even the best chimneys kind of suck when it comes to energy efficiency and safety. Wood-burning fireplaces send a whopping 85% of their energy out of that chimney, and gas fireplaces aren't that much better with new literature linking natural gas appliances to dangerous levels of nitrogen oxide and carbon monoxide. So what are the top reasons to remove an old chimney? Well, I've got six good ones. Number one, you're losing heat through the chimney flue. Does anyone else remember their dad yelling to them? Close the door, we're not heating the outside. Well, having an unused chimney is sort of like having a little door open all the time. Even a sealed chimney is losing air through the masonry or any gaps in the seal. Number two, you're losing heat through conduction from heating the thermal mass of the chimney stack. That beautiful stonework is an amazing conductor of your expensive space heating, which can be cozy indoors, but is a complete waste when the chimney stack is sticking out the top of your roof. Number three, reclaiming wasted space in the home. Now, in our case, the chimney is a tripping hazard on the third floor, and on the first floor, it takes up a huge space in the living room. Taking out the chimney will allow us to open up the space to accommodate our large family. Number four, roof leakage. Chimney stacks are arguably one of the most common sources of roof leaks, especially as the chimney stack ages. Which brings me to number five, a damaged chimney stack. Who would have thought that a skinny brick tower exposed to the elements for decades might get easily damaged? A damaged chimney can cause water and air leaks. And finally, number six, ordinances and certification. Since Chimneys are often a source of emissions and pollution. Some cities don't allow them at all. And if you're going for a home certification like LEED, check to make sure that the fuel source for your fireplace doesn't cost you LEED points. Other home certifications like Passive House plainly say no to any combustion that involves emissions and potential air quality issues. So should I seal my chimney or remove it altogether? This is such a big question that we're gonna do a chart about it. A good old pros and cons list. So let's throw that bad boy up there. So let's first talk about the advantages of removing your chimney stack only. A good seal will reduce heat loss and risk of leaks. It's more affordable and well, there's less risk of causing structural damage to the home. But what are the risks of removing just the chimney stack? Well, a poor seal could be a source of heat loss and leaks. The interior chimney takes up a lot of space in the home, and there's a potential for drafts and noise between floors. So what are the advantages of removing the chimney from one or more floors below the roof? Well, for one, you can gain extra space in the home. Two, it makes way for installing high-performance insulation in your attic. 
and three, it can better insulate between floors. And now for the risks, well, for one, it can be very expensive. Two, there is a risk of structural damage to the home. In our case, we're keeping the chimney breast in the basement because it's not taking up any living space and we don't need to add unneeded cost and additional waste to the landfill. So how do you remove a chimney from inside a house? Well, you've decided to go above and beyond just removing the chimney stack. Removing a chimney from inside a home is done by dismantling it brick by brick from top to bottom. It might sound a lot like a traditional demolition job, but it has its special caveats. Before you start demolition on each floor, you'll likely need to install temporary walls to compensate for the structural support of the chimney. More permanent structural walls or beams should be installed after the full demolition project is complete. During demolition, take extra care to make sure debris isn't falling down the chimney hole onto any heads and get a decently sized team to make sure everyone is properly spotted and all that debris is taken care of as the project progresses. If you take one thing away from this video, please make it that you consult with a structural engineer before taking on this project. There are actually a few folks you should talk to, which I'll get to later on in the video, but after consulting with your expert, you'll get a good idea of whether or not this is even possible in your home. If you have a chimney along an outside wall, for example, sometimes the structural damage is just too costly to justify the project. In this case, removing the stack and sealing the top might be the smarter option. All right, so how do you manage waste and debris when removing a chimney? So removing a chimney creates way more waste than you might think. It's a lot, about a dumpster trailer full for the average home. Now, if you're removing the breast and flue from your entire home, plan to rent an oversized dumpster that you're going to fill with bricks, stone, even cinder blocks, tile, drywall, or lumber. But if you're just removing the stack on top of the roof, you can probably get away with just a small dumpster. But before you Google dumpsters near me, remember that your waste doesn't have to go to a landfill. Consider where your bricks and stones might be able to live a full second life. Maybe your contractor has a use for the material or look up local masonry companies who could come and salvage the material for free or even in some cases pay you. If all that fails, post an ad on a social listing site. There are literally millions of uses for old bricks and stones and some crafty homeowner would be happy to have it. All right, so what kind of experts should you consult before removing your chimney? Well, since removing a chimney means you're, I don't know, making a giant gaping hole in the middle of your house, you should really make sure that you know what you're doing. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you don't have a PhD in chimnology. So my number one recommendation before you get started is to consult with the right experts. All right, so here's your star lineup. You'll need a structural expert to explain any concerns with removing the breast from one or more floors. They might tell you things like where to put up temporary walls during demo, what type of structural support you'll need to install after removal, or they might even tell you not to take out the chimney at all. A masonry expert can help you decide between removing or repairing your chimney. They can also help you find a loving home for all of that precious brick and stone. Now, a local code administrator can make sure that you're obtaining the right documents and permits to remove your chimney. For our home, we had to get permission from our city's preservation review board since she's pushing 180 years old and we want to retain her Victorian charm. And lastly, find a contractor that's on the same page as you. Since chimney removal can be such an involved job, especially if you're removing the flue and breast from inside the house, like us, ideally you'll want a contractor who's done this type of job before. If you're renovating your home and hoping to pursue a home rating like LEED or Net Zero or even Passive House, you'll save some headaches if you use a contractor who understands these programs and shares your goals for your home. All right, now what paperwork do I need before I remove my chimney? Well, removing a chimney is no easy job, especially if you're removing it below the roof and down to any lower levels. Think of this hard hat as paperwork and your head as, well, you. That brick is a city inspector making you stop the demo halfway through. That one is your neighbor suing you because a cinder block smashed their window. And that brick is a literal brick because you demolished a load-bearing chimney breast with your buddies over some beer. 
There are five pieces of paperwork you should consider before starting a chimney removal project. Number one, a building permit. Make sure you have permission from your city, your housing association, your local heritage office, or whoever might have the authority to tell you what to do with your own property. Number two, blueprints. This can warn you of any structural considerations, including any shared wall concerns if you don't have a fully detached home. Your local public official's office might be able to help you track this down since the original building permit for your home would have needed to include blueprints. Number three, liability insurance. Any contractor you hire needs to have at least liability insurance to avoid all liability falling on you in the case of an accident or injury. This includes things that happen during the reno or demo and problems with the completed job for months or years afterward. Number four, a disposal permit. Some jurisdictions require a disposal permit if you're removing any materials that might endanger workers or the environment. Now this might include roof shingles, asbestos containing materials, sharp things like broken glass, oil soaked materials, or any number of things. The fee isn't usually very much, so check with the garbage bosses in your area before renting a dumpster. And number five, certifications. Check that your chosen contractor has credentials or experience that qualifies them for a challenging chimney removal. Also consider if you're trying to qualify your home for any certifications like Net Zero or LEED or Passive House, your contractor should be familiar with these programs to make sure the new skylight you're putting in doesn't disqualify you. How much does it cost to remove a chimney? Well, the cost of this project depends on how much of the chimney you're removing from your home. Removing a chimney stack can cost as little as $1,000, including sealing the gap and removing the demolition waste. But removing a load-bearing chimney stack and breast from one or more floors could cost about $5,000 or more. An old home with many floors and structural considerations could run into the five-figure neighborhood. In this case, we suggest consulting with a contractor who has done these types of jobs before. So once your chimney is all grown up and moved out of the house, what's gonna be your main source of heat? Let us know in the comments. Now we are working on making this beast as efficient and comfortable as possible with the best products we can find. We're filming every step of this project, so subscribe to follow along as we install a new HRV system, high performance windows, beautiful hardwood flooring, and more of the good stuff. You can learn more about the products we're using at our store, shop.buildwithrise.com, or give us a call to ask any questions or to start an order. That's all for today's video, folks. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.